So first, I would like to thank the organizer and the assessor for organizing this uh, fantastic experiment and uh, meeting. So sorry that we cannot join the conference in person due to the, the COVID-19. Um, so today I'm going to introduce uh, the prediction of protein tertiary structure and uh, assembly using alpha uh, using tl zeta x2 and alpha 4 2 uh, so I, my my talk have three parts first is uh, about the method so we we are introducing tl zeta x2 basically this is an improved version of the tl zeta we developed in two years ago so in this version, you can see here, basically it's a two-step approach compared with the alpha fold to end-to-end -end prediction. We didn't make this end-to-end -end because we, we don't have enough uh, computer resource to train the network. Uh, so, so the first step is to predict the interrestrial distance and orientations, and then use this uh, minimization to fold the structure. So compared with uh, alpha fold two network, so here is a few key difference are highlighted in the red circles. Um, by this improved version of TRO data, you can see here we are better in the CASP 14 uh, targets in our test. The results are better than Rosetta fold and uh, closer to alpha fold two, but still there are some uh, room to uh, improve further. So, um, as we know, the MSA generation and selecting is very important uh, to uh, improve the structure modeling, uh, both for TRL Zeta X2 and uh, Alpha 4 2. So, we uh, did a lot of work in this direction. So, in CASP 15 experiment, uh, we collected uh, three different uh, databases uh, for generating MSA. So, the first two are standard ones. The first one is uh, from the CoLab. They are using the uh, expandable profile um, and then search by MMS62. And the second one is probably the, the standard one is from the HH Blitz package. We have three one, three databases here. So the first is UniCluster 30, and the second one is UniRef 30, and the last one is BFD. Um, in fact, in our experiment, we find that the, the HMM format uh, database, the first one, UniCluster 30. 2018 is very good in our experiment. Also in our TLZ server by using this one to search the database. So this inspired us to create uh, some profile databases like this one. So we get the third databases. It's called a custom and collect uh, faster sequences. So basically it contains the uh, ref sequences and the uh, magnify cluster sequences. Also some single sequence from the first two databases. Um, in this, because this is a single sequence databases, we just use Jackhammer to search through these databases uh, to find a homologs in the first step. And then, because I said the actual blitz in the first one, uh, in the second one is very good uh, to search for the Unicluster 2018. Then we just uh, try to build something like this HH blitz based HM format profile. So we use a Unicluster program to. Uh, to create a sequence profile database in HM format, then we can use HG Blitz to uh, search for this, uh, to, to refine the, uh, to generate MSA for this third databases. So in total, we get uh, uh, about 30 MSAs, and about this, these are too many. So we just uh, try to use the TLZX2 to select uh, these MSAs. In terms of actually, we didn't run the full pipeline. We just uh, use the first step of predicting the interrestrial distance orientation, and then select uh, the MSA using this very uh, fast version. So we get five candidate MSA for later structural prediction. Also, I want to mention that we use the disorder three to predict disorder regions, and then remove this known disorder regions before we run this pipeline. Also, the structural prediction. So for this start prediction, so basically what we input the MSA, we collect the, in the first step, and then use TLS2 to predict the models, and then clustering the predicted models, and also select a model based, based on the quality assessment while using the DPM QA to rank the models. Uh, when there's no MSA, we just use our um, single sequence or the language model based TLS like singer to predict structure, but 
but mostly this is not, it's not very good. Um, in case the T of X to two score is slow for the models, we also try alpha fold two to predict the models in this way. And then we compare the models by both approach and rank them by the QA score to submit uh, the better one. So the, these are the pipeline for the multiple predicting, the protein assembly predictions. So we don't have an approach for predict the protein probe interacting, uh, but we have better alignment. So we try to test if this work. So we just use the MSA from the um, molecular structure prediction uh, before and uh, input them to this alpha fold multiple. Uh, but here there are a few changes. We don't run the MSA pairing. In, in fact, in my test, we, I we didn't see any difference between pairing and a lot of pairing. And sometimes it's even worse by pairing the MSA. So we turn off the pairing, but for this target, H1134 uh, is different. We need a pair. Uh, and one, when we get uh, these models, we select uh, them based on the IPTM plus PTM score. Uh, for bigger targets, example, for this H1111, we just uh, also use templates. And we also try to the interplay between alpha folder uh, multimer and uh, the monomer models by T of X and uh, uh, alpha for two. So it's in this way. So if the complex model is bad, mostly due to for the monomer structure prediction is hard for this multimer version. So we just just try to input the uh, monomer model from the young server model to the alpha folder multimer pipeline. And also for these uh, targets with uh, strong intervening the interaction, we just uh, uh, deduce the model model from this complex model. So these are the, 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 the introduction of the methods. No, I go to with, with the results. So first for this target T1130, um, you can see, I think this, most people find that there are no homologue sequences uh, in these first two databases, the first one and the second one. So in this case, for single sequence based on folding, for TLX2, the predicted uh, TM score is about uh, 0.35. And also the same for alpha fold 2 it's very low in predicted LDG score. Uh, fortunately, when with a third search, we can find about a uh, of 400 homology sequences from the, the, these databases. Then, okay, with this MSA, we can easily predict structure with both TRZX2 and uh, alpha fold 2. So this, I think is fortunate. So we can make this model to be much better than the single sequence without low MSA. Uh, so for another target, this, this, this one is very, uh, is more than 1,000 1, residues. But the problem is because of its length. The problem is because when you search the full length through all databases, we only find one full length sequence hit. So we just try to uh, split the target into domains using our approach called Unidoc. So this method is not published yet. Uh, we, this is the domain boundary we predicted. And then try to search each domain sequence against the three databases to collect homologous sequences. You can see here, now we can get uh, uh, more uh, homology sequences for each domain. And then we try to assemble the domain MSAs for the full length target. Also, at the same time, we also predict uh, the uh, domain structure first, and then input this structure and templates for the full length modeling. You can see here, from, from the default running without uh, this domain passing, the predicted LDT score is very low in the left figure. But when we do this uh, uh, process, you can see the predicted uh, LDT becomes very more than before. So here is the uh, results for this, the six domains of this target. As you can see all four all domains, the uh, model are, the models are improved greatly. Uh, but here there is one problem with this domain four, I will have a, another slide to show this. So you can see for this domain, uh, the score is, is, is not very good. 
this is mostly because we didn't have a correct domain boundary predicting. Okay, for the, this domain, they are basically are, were split into two different domains. Then we, we collected the domain MSA. There will be no coevolution between this, especially this N terminal and the C terminal region. So that's why in this model, you can see the blue one. So these two are separated, but in the relative structure, they are uh, interacting. So this may uh, they indicate the problem of the domain path. You have to predict the domain boundary correctly. Otherwise, we may have a wrong orientations between domains. Uh, for another domain, this uh, this one is very probably the biggest one in CASP 15 more, with more than 3,000 residues. Um, but for this one, the problem is due to the disorder already. Uh, in the disorder three prediction, this N terminal and this C terminals, they are mostly disordered. So we removed them before the MSA search, also the structural building. You can see uh, after we remove this region, the first domain in the N terminal, this D1, and the last domain, this one, D4, they predict the LDD score are changed, are improved greatly for these two. Uh, but we, we didn't uh, split them into domain because we already get enough homology sequence for this removed version of the target. So you can see for this D1 and the D4, the structure models are uh, improved greatly in terms of TM score for D1 and the D, D4, but D, D2 and D3 are similar. Uh, but here is still there's one problem. So when we pre, uh, predict disorder is by disorder three, you can see here the N terminal regions, these residues are removed uh, wrongly, but in fact, uh, they are ordered in the structure. Um, so this TM score is in fact is very high, but if you put them back, you will get a higher TM score. So this maybe indicate we need to be cautious when we remove these other regions. So another target is this, uh, this one, this is very big. And for this target, especially for this, uh, this, this, this protein on Enigma, you can see the first six chains, they have strong intervening interactions. So if we, we need to put them together to model, you can see here, this is uh, for the six, first six chains. If we, for this one, basically we're using alpha folder to multiple. You can see with this uh, modeling, we can get this, uh, the, the direction of this, this domain correct. Because for each of these subunit, uh, S1 to S6, they have two domains, D1 and D2. For D1, they are very, uh, probably just a beta sheet. So it's very easily, it can be easily predicted by, uh, by more than together or separate. But for the second domain, D2, you can see they have strong intervening interactions between different chains. So if you model them separately, you get something like this. So if you superpose them to the related structure, you can see uh, the difference between this region of the separate model. So it means for these kind of targets, it's important to model them uh, as a whole rather than separate. Uh, so I have 10 minutes. Um, for this target, this uh, protein or enigma or protein assembly, um, first uh, for this wider type, the alpha fold to multimer model, I think is very accurate with dot Q score larger than 0 0.9. And because another target T1109, this target is a, a mutated version of this target. And uh, because it changes structure, um, so, we look into this structure closely. You can see here we have two observations. The first one is this mutated, mutated residue. This is D183 uh, is changed another to alanine, uh, mutated, mutated to alanine. So you can see this uh, residues has interacting with another one in another chain. So means if we inter we mutated this residue probably they will break this interaction. So we think this is important, the first observation. Another observation is between these uh, two residues. These two in the chain A, they form a disulfide uh, bond. So if we uh, mutate them, probably they will not form this uh, uh, 
this does not form anymore. But uh, because this is a demo, is a home demo, probably this another the rest of the inner chain can probably come back to here uh, to form a disulfic bond. So this based on these two observations, again we try to uh, curate uh, MSA to see if we can get a model with this kind of to satisfy this kind of observations or not. So this is a mutation. You can see these two. Uh, this the the side chain basically becomes smaller from this mutation. Then we guess this uh, interacting will be broken after it's mutated. Another opposition is because it's disulfide bond. So we just uh, try much more MSAs, and we just find that one interesting MSA is from the, the, the third databases. Okay, and from this one, we can see we have a model to satisfy these observations. So here, here is the change. So the, this new uh, disulfide bond is, inter, is uh, is formed by the residue from two different chains. And also the interaction between this one was broken. So this one, based on this observation, we have this more new models. Uh, more time. So for this uh, very big uh, target, so especially for this uh, subunit uh, T1129S2. So by default, the MSA from the DB1, we get this uh, about six, 26 sequences. And from the second database, we get 22, 22. But from the third one, we can enrich the MSA to more than 400 sequences. You can see here from the predicted LDT score, we can see the model improved a lot from the third, the third or second database. So we we just try to input these uh, sequences to alpha fold, uh, alpha fold uh, multimod. And also we use this modular model as a template. If we don't use this as a template, it's still not good. So we use both this as a template and this MSA as a input for alpha fold multimod. Now we can get a, a predict score of 19 or 80 over uh, compared with 30 of the default one. So you can see here, this the model is very accurate by doing these two uh, um, process. So in for the CASP 15 targets, for these two is very are uh, very hard. So from all databases search, we can find any we can't find anything. So for both one, so the predict model are probably are bad for both PLZX2 and AF2. We have no idea how to improve them. So last is a summary. So what works? I think these are the 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 the, uh, the strategy that works for this modeling. So first we need to uh, create a better MSA. Also we find that the PDB templates are not necessary for the target search prediction. Also the the pairing in our test we find the MSA pairing is not necessary. But for H1, 1, 3, 34, I don't have time to show that target. This pairing is necessary for for that target. And for this big uh, protein assembly, probably the homologous templates are important. For example, for this target, so alpha fold two multiple cannot build a structure with this big size, but uh, we need to use template to superpose. And the, probably the first ch challenge is for these three, the single sequence folding is very for these two. I have no idea how to fold them. And for this uh, assembly for a very big target is so difficult. Also, the dynamic structure is very for the T1109. Um, that one is a single, this is not probably, uh, it's very hard. We need uh, some manual inspection to, to make it work. So, this is probably very difficult in the future. Uh, finally, I want to thanks two of my PhD students to help in the in developing the, the model model and uh, Wei Hong for, uh, for the parent, MS parent, for one target. <laughs> And also the, my previous uh, uh, supervisor, Yang Zhang, and my collaborator, David Baker, for, okay. Finally, this is my NAV members and also the funding of the NSFC. Okay, thank you all. Do I need to see, I think. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, 
Arnie, yes. So I, I'm just curious for H1111, where you use the templates, then I mean, it's very big. It's like uh, 4,400 residues out of that. So how did you run it? Did you have a big GPU? Did you run it on CPU? How did you do that? Uh, H1111. Okay, that one is not shown here. That's why I, in fact, here for we just uh, build, uh, I think, uh, part of the, we removed some disordered region and also removed some unnecessary chain for the modeling first. Uh, we just, uh, the first uh, uh, process is just uh, run alpha fold to multimer for some of the essential uh, segments of the protein. And then you will find the template. For that template, you, you, you will, we can just superpose them. We, we, I think I will re, re, uh, reorganize my, my answer. Uh, first, we, I think we just uh, uh, run alpha fold to multiple for, I think, two or three chains. And then, because from the template, you can see they are symmetric. Then we just uh, superpose uh, based on this uh, structure alignment between these, uh, I think, three chain models to the full lens. Uh, to, to the whole, whole structure of the template. All right, thank you. Other questions? Well, let's thank the speaker again. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So the next speaker is uh, gonna talk us, uh, tell us about PZ folding and it's Toshiko Oda.